Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh brothers and sisters I hope you guys are doing great and I hope you guys are doing well this Ramadan season this Ramadan month the blessed beautiful month of Ramadan where we pray unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where we fast unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for him to purify us for him to forgive our sins and for him to bless us with abundance of everything that our hearts desires now today Sheikh Khalid is about to debate this Roman Catholic priest. What are they going to talk about? I'm not quite sure. Is it going to be about Jesus? Is it going to be about Jesus being God? Is it going to be about the Mother Mary? I'm not quite sure. But what I can tell you is most of the time when a Roman Catholic priest engages a Muslim, oftentimes he will change his perspective as far as Christianity is concerned. But without further ado, before we get started, please drop a like on the video, subscribe if you are new, hit the bell notification and as the video is going on, tell us in the comment section how you feel about the comments that are made by either the priest, Roman Catholic priest or Sheikh Khalid. But without further ado, let's go and let's get it. Why do you say that the, the church says that God impregnated a woman? That is not what the church believes. Well, to be honest with you, uh, what the church believes and what the church says, they said 354 years after Jesus Christ. So I don't think that 354 years after Jesus Christ, whatever the church came up with at the Council of Ephesus or the Council of Nicaea, I don't think it holds any legitimacy when we connect it to the 19 statements that I could quote to you about who Jesus said that he is. Excuse me? Well, why don't you read it for us? <laughs> I'm sorry about this, but no, no, please, sorry, I, just, just, okay. uh, uh, I said, question. why do you say that the church says that God impregnated a woman, and the word I'm saying is impregnated, that is not what Christians, the church believes. Christians believe that Mary, as a virgin, not impregnated by anyone therefore, Mary as a virgin, empowered by God, gave birth to Jesus. I'm not talking about whether Jesus is God or anything else like that. What I'm talking about is, why do you make the accusation that Mary was, why do you say that Christians say Mary was impregnated by God when we say something different? You know why, why he says that? Because of those various reasons. There are various reasons, but I'm going to quote this one particularly. There are certain versions of the Bible that says that when the angel came unto Mary to say that you have been blessed, you have been chosen among women, you know, you are favored by God amongst the women, it says, the Holy Scripture says in that regard, it says that, you know what, the Holy Spirit came in unto Mary. Previous videos we said that if the Bible says that somebody came in unto somebody, it's pertaining unto sex, it is speaking about sex, particularly having intercourse. That is what we said and we agreed on that. Islam, Christianity, both they agree on that. Now, if the version of the Bible comes and says that the Holy Spirit came in unto her and she became with child and she became pregnant by the Holy Spirit, what does that mean? That basically says that God, because Christians say the Holy Spirit is God, God impregnated Mary. Maybe that's why he's saying this, but that's just my opinion. It's an honest opinion based on facts according to the version of the Bible that's there that is saying that the Holy Spirit went in unto Mary. But let's continue. All I'm asking you is to represent Christians and their beliefs fairly. Now, if you've done it out of not knowing, I don't mind. But Christians don't believe that God impregnated Mary. They believe that God empowered Mary to give birth to a child, okay. which is, I think, what you believe. You don't. Well, be don't, don't, ask, don't ask me what I believe. No, but, just, state your question, and yeah. then I'm going to answer you. What okay. I'd like you to do is, you might have a little follow-up. So why don't you sit right there while I answer? Oh, okay. <laughs> now, since you have opened up this can of worms. Yeah. We're going to talk about it. Okay. Now, the, 
The concept that the church does say about Mary is that Mary is the mother of God. Yes. Yes. And as such, they also believe that Mary is also the daughter of God. In another sense, yes. In another sense. And also that Jesus, I mean that Mary, that she is also the immaculate. That is, what does immaculate mean? Without sin. Without sin. That means like a human being that is perfect. Yes. Good. So as the mother of God, she's the mother of God, that is the mother of Jesus. And she's also the daughter of God because Jesus is also God. And I will go about it to church. I look, I want the chance to answer all this later. Just, well, just a moment. I'm answering. We'll answer the question. Yeah, okay. Now, I never said that the church said that Mary was impregnated by God. I didn't say that. You used the word impregnated. Well, well but that's not what I said. You used the word impregnated. Well, let me just cl clarify for you that it is not my understanding as a Christian, previously a Christian, that your belief is that God impregnated Mary. No, what we say, what we understand, which is a different understanding that you have, is that Mary was impregnated by the Word of God. That the Word of God was placed inside Mary and she became pregnant. Okay? Even on that, even on that, there's still a, a whole lot of question marks. The word became flesh. It's also a scripture in the Holy Bible. But still, what was the word? They say the word was God. The word was with God, right? They say also that the word is the Holy Spirit. That the word of God, the Bible itself, is also the word. The word is sharper than a two-edged sword. Therefore, if you're holding the Bible, you are holding the word of God. You are holding... You know what, the, the, the weapon that is there, the weapon of God, which is the Holy Spirit, right? The weapon that was used by Michael and the angels when they cast out Lucifer out of heaven. That's what they say. If then Mary was impregnated by the word, how could the word impregnate Mary if the word came from an angel? It did not come from God directly. It came from the angel. So therefore, who impregnated Mary? Was it the angel or was it God? Was it the Holy Spirit or was it the angel? Who impregnated Mary? Which word and where did the word come from? Who gave the word? Was it the angel or did God send the angel to impregnate? It's a whole lot of question marks. And it's not clear because in Christianity, nothing is clear. They leave everything to speculation, assumption, as well as the so-called revelation. But let's continue. Okay. Now, what, now what, we have, what we have a problem with, Reverend, what we have a problem with is this paganistic concept that God has a mother and God got a daughter. Now, that means God is locked in on both sides by Mary. God is, Mary is God's mother on one hand, and then she's God's daughter on the other hand. Now that's a problem with anybody. Now that seems to be some incestuous relationship there. Can, can, can I respond now? Can I respond? Well, listen, let, let me say this to you. If you were sort of like, um, if you were sort of ir ir irritated by me, by your thinking that I said that Mary is impregnated by God, I take that away. And so, uh, th so you, you have that. But you yourself said to everybody here that Mary is considered to be the mother of God and also the daughter of God. We say we reject that. Now, you can rent your own hall and give your own speech, and then I'll ask questions to you at another time. Uh, can, I, can I just say, okay. Because well, there's more questions okay, here. Yeah, all of this, I simply wanted you to clear the allegation that okay. God impregnated Mary. Okay. You have done that, and okay. I would agree that Thank the you. question about how Mary's mother is God another time. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, we, we want to thank um, we want to thank our friend, and uh, and no aspersion meant to the Catholic Church at all. Just a matter of concepts. Thank you very much. Surah Maryam, a very famous chapter in the Holy Quran. The day we shall gather them with Taekwon. What is that? 
unto the most beneficent I, I can't read that word i'm sorry and we shall drive the criminals to hell in a thirsty state none shall have the power of intercession but such as one who has received permission from the most beneficent which is allah and they say the most beneficent allah has begotten a son indeed you have brought forth a terrible evil thing whereby the heavens are almost torn and the earth is spread asunder and the mountains fall in ruins all right this is a very famous chapter by the way that they ascribe a son to the most beneficent which is allah but it is not suitable for the most beneficent that he should beget a son or offspring or children right there is none in the heavens and the earth that comes unto the most beneficent as a servant. Hmm, wow, that's interesting. It's very interesting there. Very interesting. Verily he knows each one of them and has counted them a full counting. And every one of them will come to him alone on the day of resurrection. Verily those who believe and work deeds of righteousness, the most beneficent, will bestow love for them, inshallah. So we have made this, the Quran, easy in your own tongue that you may give glad tidings to the pious and righteous people that you may give glad tidings to the what pious and righteous persons and on with it the most quarrelsome people, I think. And how many a generation before them have we destroyed? Can you, O Muhammad, find a single one of them or hear even a whisper of them? Yeah, that's a that's that's a chapter of the Quran. It's one of the most famous chapters in the Quran, the most well-known one, in my opinion, even outside of the fold of Islam, even outside of the Islamic religion. Now, every time, like I said at the beginning of the video, when a Christian, a Christian priest, particularly a Roman, debates a Muslim, it's always a matter of concepts. It's always a matter of concepts that comes into question. And it's not the matter of concepts according to the Islamic point of view that comes into question. It's always the Roman Catholic or the Christian point of view that comes into question. Because as you heard him say, he believes that Mary is the mother of God, also believes that Mary is the daughter of God. That in itself is incest. It's very ancestral if you think about it. Moreover, there's other things of Jesus Christ being God, Jesus Christ being the Son of God. There's a whole lot of things there that make no sense. Old Testament speaks about God having sons and daughters. New Testament now derails all of those people who were mighty women of Allah, mighty prophets of Allah, mighty men of Allah. It cancels all of them out and says now only Mary and Jesus are the prestigious ones according to religion that is why churches like the roman catholic church put jesus christ peace be upon him as well as the mother mary in very high regard it is because they consider them as such as deities they consider them i don't even know which word to use but they put them in a god status kind of view and that is very, very troublesome because it creates a lot of confusion as far as who is Mary, why is she that important, who is Jesus Christ, why is he that important, and where does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala come in all of that equation. But tell me in the comments what you think about today's video. Tell me in the comments what you think about the comments that Sheikh Khalid made and also the Roman Catholic priest has made regarding the matter of Mary as well as her son Jesus Christ peace be upon him but before you leave do me one more favor if you have not done like the video like the video subscribe if you're new hit the bell notification and we meet again on the next reaction video much love peace